this is Mr. T with another tutorial. Uh, as we get into calculus, one of the things that you will ha be having to do on a regular basis is solve what's called polynomial and rational inequalities. At this point, I don't want to get into the reason for that in the calculus that will come about as we move through the year, but uh, this is a prerequisite skill that uh, I want to get out of the way before we get into the calculus. Uh, you should have had this skill in your Algebra 2 class and your pre-calculus class. So let's talk about polynomial inequalities first. And let's talk uh, visually here. So if I make a uh, coordinate uh, plane, and I just want to sketch the graph of some random uh, polynomial. Polynomials are functions which have smooth curves and uh, they're also uh, continuous meaning there are not breaks in them so we've shown here a, a polynomial function and what we are interested in is say solving for all the values of x where f of x is greater than zero now if we look at the graph we can tell that uh, you know, this axis is our f of x axis, so the vertical are the f of x values and the horizontal are the x values. So if we want to find f of x values that are uh, greater than zero, we are looking for all the places where f of x is above the x axis. These points here which I'm coloring in, are called the zeros of the function, places where it crosses a, the x-axis. They're also known as x-intercepts. And we can determine here that the regions of f of x that are above the f, f of x-axis are between the zeros. And between zeros, you can't have part of the function being above the axis and part of it below the axis because if we did then we would have another zero so if we found all the possible zeros of a function then we can use that to determine uh, where our function is uh, or where inequality is true so this part of the function makes our inequality true so these x values make it true between here and here and also over here I skipped that part they are below that's not true here we are above the x-axis, so this range of x values solves the inequality. And out here it's false, so if we were showing the solution to our inequality on our number line, if these were our zeros, our solution would be between here and here, and between here and here and if we label these as a b c and d and in interval notation our solution would be the open interval from a to b union with the open interval from c to d so we're going to apply this to a problem in a second with uh, a specific function and numbers, but our steps are going to be to uh, determine the zeros of our function. And normally for polynomials, the way we find zeros is by factoring. And then we have to determine in each of the intervals between the uh, zeros whether the function is above the axis or below. Now we could do that by graphing, but that would be considerable work to graph a, a complicated polynomial. But we can determined by evaluating a value of x between our intervals and decide is it above or below the x-axis. You'll see that when we go through the uh, example in a minute. So let me set that up. So here's our example. We're going to solve the polynomial, in this case a quadratic, 3x squared minus 10x minus 8 is less than 0. Now before we solve any of these inequalities, we always have to make sure that uh, 
the inequality is being compared to zero. So if we had numbers over here, we would use our algebra to put everything on the left side. We need to find the zeros of this polynomial. Now we can find zeros by factoring. We could also use quadratic formula. We could potentially use graph and calculator and other things that we've learned. This one we're going to factor. Just as a quick review, we'll review factoring these quadratics where a is not equal to 1. I use what's called the a times c method. So we take a times c. a times c is 3 times negative 8 is negative 24. And I need to find a pair of numbers that multiply to be negative 24 and add to be my b value, negative 10. So that would be negative 12 and positive 2. And I rewrite my quadratic, splitting the bx term into two pieces using those factors that we just found. And we now factor this by grouping. We group the first two terms and the last two terms and do GCF factoring on each group. And for this method, if these two factors are the same, which it should be if uh, the polynomials um, factorable, then you've done things correctly to this step. So now we can GCF factor out the x minus 4 on uh, these two terms, and our leftovers would be 3x plus 2. So we now have our polynomial in factored form. Now again, one of the things that we determined were that the boundaries between where this function is above or below the x-axis happens at the zero. So our zeros for our polynomial by setting each of these factors equal to zero and solving that are 4 and negative uh, 2 thirds. Now we need to uh, find on the number line places where our function is, if we had a coordinate plane, where it would be, in this case, less than zero means below the x-axis. Uh, I'm going to locate my zeros on the number line, dividing the number line up into three intervals, this interval, this interval, this interval. And from our previous discussion, we know that in each of these intervals, because we've found all the zeros of the function, it is either entirely above or below the x-axis. So we can do that by just picking a single point in each interval called a test point and determining is it does it make this inequality true or false so the test points that I'm going to use you pick easy numbers that are easy to calculate we don't want to have to use a calculator so in this interval I'm going to pick negative 10 in this interval I will pick uh, 0 and in this interval let's say positive 10 and we want to evaluate f of x for each of these uh, value, test points. Now, I don't actually need to know the specific value of f of x. I really only need to know is it smaller than 0, less than 0, meaning negative, or is it positive? So the shortcut I use is I substitute into the factored form and use my rules for multiplying positive and negatives. So if I put negative 10 into x minus 4, that's going to be negative 14, so that's negative. And if I put t negative 10 into 3x plus 2, I've got negative 30 plus 2, negative 28, that's negative. And negative times negative is positive. So this part of the interval is above the x-axis. So it does not make this inequality true. So this part is false. Let's try the same thing with 0. If I put 0 into x minus 4, I get negative. And if I put 0 in here, I get positive. Negative times positive equals negative, which is less than 0. So this part of the interval is good. And finally, if I put positive 10 in, 10 minus 4 is positive. Uh, 30 plus 2 is positive, positive times positive is positive. 
so this is not less than zero. So my solution is this interval between negative two-thirds and four and if we write that as interval notation our answer would be the open interval negative two-thirds comma four. Okay, let's talk about uh, rational uh, function inequalities now. I've drawn a sketch of some arbitrary rational uh, function. Rational functions are different than polynomials in that they may have portions or places where they have discontinuities. Uh, frequently on rational functions, discontinuities look like vertical asymptotes. And so on our graph we have two zeros here. I've shown a vertical asymptote and we have a zero here. Now the key same thing similar to polynomials is that the function between these key points, these critical values, the uh, zeros and now also the vertical asymptote values, the function in those intervals is either entirely above the x-axis or entirely below the x-axis. It's impossible for between that interval for it to be on both sides of the axis otherwise there would either be another zero and or another vertical asymptote. So we have to assume that we have found all of our vertical asymptotes and our um, zeros in order to uh, t test our uh, intervals. So the zeros for a rational function are found by setting your numerator of a rational function equal to zero and solving that by factoring or whatever method and vertical asymptotes are found at places where our denominator is equal to zero and then we will arrange these key values the zeros and vertical asymptotes on a number line and use the same mechanism for deciding where our uh, problem is true so if we look at the example of the rational function x plus 4 over x squared minus 1. Now that's not what I've graphed here. This was just an arbitrary function. And let's say we want, again are trying to find when this is uh, less than 0. We need to find our zeros and our vertical asymptotes. So to find the zeros, I need to solve the numerator equal to 0. So I get x equals negative 4. And to find my vertical asymptotes, I have to solve my denominator equal to 0. Now we can do this by factoring our square roots. If I factor as a difference of two squares, I get that my vertical asymptotes are at negative 1 and uh, positive 1. So we've got these three places on the number line where the function can switch sides of the uh, x-axis where it can be either positive or negative. So I organize my critical values on my number line. So I've got here negative 4, negative 1, and positive 1. And again, I will pick test points. So I pick numbers that are easy to calculate in my head, so negative 10. So here might be uh, negative 2. In here, 0. And in here, say, positive 10. And I'm going to use the factored form of this, so I'm going to be putting this into x plus 4 over x plus 1 times x minus 1 and just determining whether my test point makes each factor positive or negative. So when I put negative 10 in here I get negative, I get negative here and I get negative. We have three negatives so that makes our overall result negative which means that is less than zero so this is a solution. If I put negative 2 in I get positive on the top uh, negative 2 here makes that negative and makes that negative. So I have an even number of negative signs, so that's positive. So this is not a solution. 
If I put zero in, I get positive, positive, and negative. So that's negative. That is a solution. And finally, if I put positive 10 in, all my factors are positive. So that means this result's positive, and that's no longer a solution. So if I write my checked areas of the number line as a, a using interval notation, I have, I'm going from negative infinity to negative 4 as one open interval and a closed interval from negative 1 to plus 1. And in interval notation, these are the uh, ranges that make my uh, rational inequality true. Again, we'll be using this skill when we get into uh, derivative calculus, and hopefully this will help you. Thank you.